Hello and greetings. Welcome to the Dead Air Dudes. I'm Izzy. I am Rakastan. And obviously, if you guys can see, we are going to review season three of Cobra Kai. What's up? The 2020, well, the first season, is, it's on Netflix. And uh, after being on YouTube, and a, a YouTube original for two seasons, the hit show comes to Netflix, came out on January 1st, I do believe, yeah, January 1st. And uh, yeah, many people have seen it. It's a quick binge. So here are thoughts, reviews, and, you know, take it away, Rocco. What, well, like, what did you think? Well, what did you think it was overall before, you know, you even get to season three? I got to admit that in the beginning, I was skeptical because I, I love the 80s. I am one of those skeptics of it's a classic, it's vintage, why revisit it? Why redo it? Why drag it on? Why potentially tarnish it? So I was resistant in the beginning, but it seemed like everyone and their brother was telling me, did you catch the last episode? Did you see the cliffhanger? Did you see the season ending? Okay. So I, I, I watched it. Okay. The beginning first season got a little slow to go, but I was amused because of the nostalgia that the 80s brought. And I did love Karate Kid. It was a great movie in the 80s. It's iconic. As the story developed, I understood and I appreciated more that it wasn't just kind of a modern day karate kid. I'll be honest, it got a little teen bop soap opera ish. Well, I mean, I mean, you have to realize that you have to cater to a certain audience. You can't just cater to uh, the fans of the '80s and expect it to survive a full, you know, because. Hey, I mean, it's that nostalgia factor can wear off really quickly, you know? Well, yeah, especially the target audience today is not so much uh, children of the 80s, which it has gotten a huge following from. Let me ask you this question. Go ahead. Do you find the title appropriate of, instead of Karate Kid the series? I think it needed something different to give it a... I mean, when I first heard that they were making a Karate Kid series, I was like, what the F? I mean, I'm like, I had no, no good thoughts about him thinking it's going to be cheesy, it's going to be terrible, and why bother, you know? But then it'll be called Cobra Kai, and I'm like, how are they going to do this? So, and I first saw it, and I'm like, wow, this was actually pretty well thought out pretty well planned and the story is actually pretty decent you know i mean it's not you know emmy award winning stuff but it's it's actually pretty damn good you know it's multi-layered and above all else the karate is actually acceptable you know what i mean yeah it, it's become an after afterthought though the i understand I can under I can appreciate that Cobra Kai and Johnny Lawrence's character played by William Zabke is was the main focus. There seems to be a balanced focus on four, if not six, subplots. Yeah, you know what it is. I mean, it gets a little dramatic, soap opera-ish, a a kid soap opera-ish, teen soap opera-ish. I don't know what term you want to use. I get it. And I know the karate is almost like the, the the medium that by which things unfold because it's the main focus. I still see now that Cobra Kai is an appropriate term, right? Like you said, to give it a new fresh start. And it really should be Johnny Lawrence's story. But it is Johnny Lawrence's story. It's everything. It, you, everything you throw in Greece. You throw in you throw in uh, a troubled girl. It's all. Story. You throw in his daughter. You throw in his son. You throw in men, 
you, you throw in a lot of people. You throw, you, Miguel, you throw in, there's, there's six solid subplots going on. And it's all based off of Johnny. It's it is all based on Johnny because that's how it started out. All right, so not to, to perseverate on that. Um, as Cobra Kai, then there wouldn't be a show. And the fact that LaRusso is even in the show is because Cobra Kai is back and that draw, draw, brings him out, you know, and makes him think. And I love the fact that one episode, like, damn, I kind of feel bad for Johnny. Maybe he wasn't such a douche. And then you're like, Daniel's a dick. And then you go back and you're like, all right, you know what? He's doing the right thing or trying to do the right thing. And then you revert back. So you have, within the series, within the season, you have shifting, you know, ideas of who's bad or who's good and what's gray. And, but I, I think you hit it on the head. One of the attractive features of the whole series is there's no perfect character. No. You can understand the kids because they're growing up. Mm -hmm. They're going to make mistakes. And they're, they're being led by not so perfect role models, adults, what have you. I get it. Perfect. I, I enjoy it. Even then, is Miyagi, and Miyagi's not there anymore. So, all right. So let's let's now do this. Let's get to season two ender, and where season three takes off. Take it away. Well, basically, there's a huge fight at the school, in which uh, you have a, you know. Miguel, who at the time was was in Cobra Kai, and uh, Tori, who also was in Cobra Kai, and basically Tori attacks Sam. Who this is all spoiler driven. I'm we're not gonna explain characters, so you know either you know it or you don't. We're gonna be get you know on the road running, on the floor running, whatever. And uh, this is a re this is a review recap prognostication. Okay, this is this is hey. What do you think is going to happen? No. All right, go for it. And basically, Tori attacks Sam, who, who you know, is uh, LaRusso's daughter, uh, part of Miyagi-Do karate, karate, and Robbie, who happens to be uh, Johnny Lawrence's kid, who is also in Miyagi-Do. So there's a strange relationship with his father. They have a rough and tumble fight, which, and what I love about the show, I mean, just uh, my little two cents, is that as soon as it reaches that cringy point where you're like, oh man, it's kind of cringy. It's getting to that cringe. It hits that level and then it like brings it back. It pulls it right back. You're like, oh shoot, all right. And there's a lot it, of- It keeps it real. Yeah, yeah. Like I was totally blown away and unexpected with that ending. Right. I got to say, one of the best season ending cliffhanger episodes I've seen in a long time. Yeah. That fight, the karate, all out karate dojo's high school brawl is is a young kid in high school who's been picked on's wet dream. Yeah. So get it on. At that point, towards the end, Tori who's part of Cobra Kai has issues with Sam because Sam kind of is Sam was dating Miguel and then she was dating Rob. And then she was kind of Oh, she saw something. You know, yeah, she saw something that uh, you know, that making the move back on Miguel. So she already didn't like Sam, and it kind of that that. But at this point, already Johnny is starting to ch to change his tactics from being that sweep the leg type of you know, <laughs> rocker. Sorry, rocker. Keep going. And uh, so he is showing mercy when he had an opportunity to take out Robbie, while well, Robbie doesn't show mercy, you know, kicks, rolling, good. kicks Miguel, and with such force that he falls off the second floor directly on the railing, down, down on the first floor, snap on his back, and that's the cliffhanger. Basically, that I say, um, should we move into season three now? Done fucked up. But one, one little thing after that, 
he goes in the hospital. He's all messed up, whatever, in a coma. Uh, of course, Johnny's distraught because, you know, that's like his, uh, you know. Well, he promised the mom what? He promised the mom that no matter what. That, 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 that he, did, he, would, he would take care of him and he, would never, he wouldn't get hurt. Because that kid never gave up on him, even though the entire planet has. So, uh, Lawrence is a working alcoholic and he gets getting drunk and then he throws his phone into, uh, into the ocean at the beach. The smartphone, by the way, because it's not so smart and he can't figure out how to Facebook somebody and, um, respond on a text or email. And at that point he was, uh, Facebooking or, uh, who? His girlfriend from from movie, 1984 movie, 30 odd years ago, plus <clears throat> uh, Elizabeth Shue, uh, uh, who is now a doctor. Yes, Elizabeth Shue, Annie, Mi Annie Mills, I believe, Annie, Annie Mills Schwarber, I guess, because she's married as, you know, as a doctor, whatever. And we, we the, 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 the camera pans and sees that she, you know. Text. Oh, oh, she replied to him. We I kind of can text. And, and accept the friend request. So you yeah. left with a double cliffhanger and on to season three, where it goes directly into uh, basically a little, uh, like a small time jump. Miguel's still in the freak, still in the hospital, in a coma. He's all messed up. Johnny's still drinking. He's all messed up. Gets into fights. Gets arrested. Sneaks into the hospital to see Miguel, beats himself up in the scene out of a <laughs> out of a Fight Club to get himself in to see Miguel. Miguel doesn't want to see him, and they basically are telling him that he might not be able to walk. So, well, you know, yeah, we I kind of agree with the fact that he actually he actually wakes up, and you know, once he wakes up, let's stay on Miguel. <clears throat> to to park my medical experience in the on the shelf, for him to I come out of a coma. Rain off, you know, ladies and gentlemen. When you know, and, well, wait, wait, just to, for him to come out of a coma, and then eventually in season three, wiggle his toe, get on his, a la um, Kill Bill, and then stand up and walk. It's ridiculous. <laughs> you not only stood up and walk. Then to it. Drag out rumble. It is not just an injury to the back or spine. There was a drag out rumble huh. in the <laughs> finale. An absolute rumble. Even bigger and worse than the one he, they had in season two. I believe I did see this scene once before on an episode of uh, The Young and the Restless. Yeah, well, I mean. Is it, is it where Stefano comes out of a, a freaking coma? All right. How I know that is none of your business. But what what I must say, All right. what I must say, is I will suspend my disbelief and go with the flow yeah. because you need his character to, to be in there. He's arguably more integral than anybody in this entire. Yeah, because look, I mean, not to harp on it too much, but you can't. You got to turn your brain off because if they really had the extended time that he should have been the coma and the, and the training and and the rehab and all that stuff, add another ten episodes of him just you know whatever. I don't, I don't want to be. This is not a mockery. This is not a mockery. But we can't have Miguel get into a tournament like that. Sorry, I'm just saying. No, if if in a coma. We cannot. And obviously, when you mentioned that, obviously the, the everyone's against karate, and the old valley's canceled because of all what happened in school. Sam has panic attacks from the day that she got slashed by Tori. You know, looking at Wolverine, and she, she doesn't know. She's scared shitless. She is scared. She she's Tori, and she runs and wants to hide. Yeah. So obviously, you have Cobra Kai run by Crease. Crease is now taking over. Bone up on your uh, on your karate kid. So, uh, and Crease 
we have a little opening to Kreese's backstory. Which is kind of cool. They actually, you go into his backstory. You go and, and, and you basically see what makes Kreese Kreese. So not only did he have it kind of rough as a child, once he got to the military, he was under the command of a psychopath. Yes. Who, who basically taught them um, the ways and the arts of killing. No mercy. That's where he gets it all from. And then the most pivotal scene is when they get captured. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, backtrack. There's a message sent from home that his girlfriend died in a car accident or something. Yes. And, then, and then the commanding officer, uh, the dick who made him the way he is, opts to suppress that information. Kreese is given the role to blow up the village or something, but there's still innocent people around, so he won't do it. They all get captured, and the commanding officer blames everything on Kreese because he was not man enough to pull the trigger. Meanwhile, the enemy makes the troops fight each other to the death. Yeah. When it comes time for him, for the commanding officer to go, he's, he's Superman. He's man of man. He's the man meter man. He's like, oh, well, time to go. And whoever I'm going to face, oh, they pick some other punk. He goes, oh, looks like I'm going to move on and survive. So he has no problem killing his own men to survive. And he knows it's a weakling. So Kreese kind of jumps in to play hero. Like, no, I won't let that guy die. Yeah, this is all my fault. I'm going to face you. And they square off. Yeah, and yeah again, suspension of disbelief. These are on, this is an unsanctioned mission, an unsanctioned, unsanctioned battalion. Black Ops thing. Of, uh, you know, special forces, some thing or another. But, you know, yeah. So, so no, no, long story no, short. No, there are, there are no... Uh, there's no captain, no nothing, you know, no. Oh, no, yeah, there's no command. The, the U.S. forces come to save them. The commanding officer is hanging by thread. He says, all right, we're done. We're being saved. Lift me up, lift me up. And Kreese is basically telling him to F you. He lets him die. Meanwhile, and this is why this is all pivotal, not just his backstory, the guy who he stepped in to save his ass told him, I will never forget what you did for me for the rest of my life, no matter what favor you need, whatever you want, consider it done. And that, I'm sorry, I'm fast forwarding, that leads into the ender, season ender of three. Yeah. As you, as Izzy alluded to, the community has seen or has witnessed the karate outbreak in the high school, fights all over town, a kid in a coma, possibly not able to walk. They shut it. They shut the martial arts tournament down. It that I thought was a very comical scene when you have. That's pretty good. When we there was a town hall and you have Crease going. Oh, because we freaking get that. Uh, Johnny creates his own. You know, once Miguel starts, you know, kicking ass again, he creates his own. Dojo, a, a new, separate. Fang, some fang birds of prey or something. Eagle fangs. Yeah. Eagle fang. Johnny, Johnny's character has sniffed some industrial glue and has had oxygen deprived moments, I, I assume. Because he's not the most clever, sharpest tool, nor the most creative. Not to mention technologically challenged. But that I say is funny. That is a comic. When I saw that insignia and the name, it's awesome. and that they're also using the park. Awesome. That's freaking awesome. The eagle with the fang. That's it, it, Dude, I, I'm buying that shirt. You make that shirt, they didn't have it. If Comic Con 22 happens, we're going as Cobra Kai. Of course, we also we 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 happen and we glazed over the fact that. While this is going on, um, obviously, uh, the, the Russo's uh, uh, car dealership is in financial ruin. They're losing a lot of a lot of customers because of the whole karate karate stuff. And also, they're about to lose a huge contract with Toyota, not Toyota, but Toyota. 
Cut right and and, uh, so coincidentally, he has to go to J- Japan. And uh, you like that episode? The Okinawa thing? Yeah. I expected better. I expected more. But it was cool. It was it was all right. I mean, a bit of a yawn. I would have given more um, more soap opera antics. I would have actually. I mean, with spoilers here, so I would have actually had Naruto actually do something or about to do something with with with, with, uh, with, with Komiko. You get, get or get and or get jumped by uh, what's his name uh, the. Yuji Okimoto's uh, character. And they fight, and he teaches him the pressure oh, point, yeah. and he wanted the scrolls and the whole yada yada. Yeah. Shows up, and uh, him and Kum, uh, basically this beef with the with the guy from the Karate Kid too. Chosen. Yeah, Chosen, you go. Chosen. Chosen teaches him some some hidden tactics or hidden uh. Was you know. handed down from Vulcan. <laughs> yes, yes. He learned. He learns after so many years. Daniel Russo finally learns pressure points, and uh, that's right, he learns pressure point. So Joseph's yeah. cool with it. He taught him that he has a good funny thing when he goes, which is kind of funny. But uh, Kumiko is all happy and everything, and you never, you never understand, and you never know because they never even explain what the hell happened. They had a, a summer fling, and that was it. What the hell? She was a special person in his life. I guess I guess she was, she was not special, but his bacon is saved by. I forgot her name, but remember the girl who he saved. The girl who he saved, who almost took them out when 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 in part two. This is why I did not really care for this episode. Not only was it a huge yawn. It was so contrived and pushed down my throat, I needed to vomit. You know, I mean, hey, I'm Maybe a too far. fan of continuity, and I enjoy the fact that they brought those characters back. Yeah, and but it's also too perfect. Like, okay, now we're going to save your car dealership because of her. you got these pressure point things in your pocket now. Everything is settled. The guy who wanted to kick your ass 35 years ago now has found inner peace, and we'd like to resolve things with you. Oh, uh, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm gonna hit it. I'm gonna hit the bullshit button. I'm gonna hit the bullshit button. The guy who wanted to kill Daniel Son. Don't forget, they fought to the death. They were they were fighting until they took out the sticks. Again, I'm not trying to mock. I'm mean, I'm just trying. I'm just trying to uh to. You saw the drumsticks. Remember that? The drumstick. It's 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 it's, it's the. Oh, I'm sorry. It, it, the corniest scene in all of cinema. The hand drum. The hand, you know, the hand drum. And <laughs> you yeah. say it with a straight face. Kudos to you. Real. This is for real. This is real life or something. To that effect. So I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm a sucker for all those scenes. So yeah, like same thing when you had one of one of uh, Johnny's Cobra Kai buddies come in, who was a, was a preacher, and he did the sweep the leg, and it was it was pretty funny. And yes. Uh, Naruso puts Robbie into he he, he uh, you know he goes to, goes to Juvie basically. So you can imagine Robbie hates his father, hates Daniel, and he, he ends up with Chris. Ends up with there you go. You can almost see the boardroom scriptwriters kind of take everybody's chess piece and go, all right, we're gonna do this now. They're gonna end up this guy with that one. This one's gonna kiss that one. Not they're gonna see it, and we're gonna hate that one. I mean, they're having fun with this. It it's entertaining, so I let it go. Um, so we know now what's happening. Let me see. Then they have. Oh, we know we have these these six things. We have to put these in and make it work. And so far, they're making it work. Uh, like you said, is it a bit contrived? Yes. But is it fun? Yes. Turn your brain off? Yes. So, so the Miyagi Sun Dojo, and the the fanged eagles um scouts whatever they're now going to join together to join forces against crease's uh ass- assumed cobra kai now with the two badass uh really bad i mean not he has a lot of badasses on his roster 
He's got Peyton, who I uh, got Tori, Painless, sorry. Tori, who's probably the apex predator there. Um, what's his name? Oh, Hawk. Um, Hawk. Hawk. He's got the bully from the first season. What the hell's his name? Oh, Tyler. Tyler. Yeah, Tyler, yeah. So, so, so Kyler's there. He, he's got a bunch of Scrooges, and now you have the rejects. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, in, in a court, in context, the social misfit rejects in the show banding together. So this is basically this is this is Revenge of the Nerds three. Yeah, and then and then you have a, a jacked up uh, Miguel, and you have a scared Sam. So Miguel's all goody goody, and him and Sam are kind of giving them some googly eyes, and and you know, so it looks like they're gonna get back together, which that enrages Tori, and you know, sends her back to Cobra Kai. So now Cobra Kai goes to Larusso's house, and somehow they break in. Actually, no, they were invited in, but then after the door was closed, they you know, no, wasn't one of the kids thrown thrown through a window? They were, yeah, they were throwing a kind of a mixer where it was blind. Yeah, the, it was a Christmas party that they were, they tricked the, the, the Eagle Scouts hook up. And, right. and, and Miyagi Do to combine forces. So when they all there, they were like, oh man, you know. F it started and, out rough. And it ended up all right. Two penis breath. Right. One of the kids went out for whatever, and then he got thrown through the window. Then you have the whole bunch of badasses there, uh, yeah. Tori and company. Well, they, 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 they came in after that, I guess. You know, I guess uh, Kobo Kai has, has 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 keys or something. So well, the the Uber picked on person Dimitri got his arm broken. The Cobra oh, guy. We, we did glaze over that also. Yes, yeah. that was pretty. Cool. Yeah, I mean, we we have to because we can't pick on everybody. We'll be here for five hours. But Dimitri's got picked on everybody. Got a broken arm. Uh, a hawk, his best friend, broke his arm. Yeah, now Dimitri deserved it. Uh, I'm sorry, D D Dimitri's a freaking douche nozzle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so but uh, well, hawk is a bigger one. Hawk. hawk I actually kind of like hawk. You know I mean, hawk has a mondo chip on his shoulder, but it is pivotal to bring that up because they're about to break his arm again. Right. And he gets hawk is right there, and they're like free shot. I think Kyler's the one holding him. Like, you got a free shot. Let's go. You know, again, they're playing bully. They're playing – basically, by the way, that is the sidebar. Um, all of Cobra Kai is basically a, a parroting bully's nightmare. But Hawk, all of a sudden, his consciousness wakes up, and he says, I fucked up my best friend. Yeah. And I'm going to do it again. What am I doing? I am now – I've been belittled by Chris. Tori's taking my place. Kyler, who, who picked on me for years, is now taking my place. And even Robbie took us. Even Robbie was thinking he was all taking his place. And now he's going to beat up. He's going to break his previous best friend's arm again for what? So I do like that moment where he basically said no. So yeah, uh, uh, that's my statement from before. Circle, which is, you know, I do like that, that, that his redemption arc, which is pretty cool. He he actually joins me, uh, whatever the hell they're called, Miyagi Do slash Eagle Scout, Eagle Eagle Fang Scouts. Well, right now he's the top dog in the the joint forces, unless um, Miguel is getting his absolute ass kicked at this point. Well, Miguel just started to walk three days ago. It, 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 mean, it went three days ago. It was. Oh boy, could his pencil his name? I mean, give me a break. I mean, Samantha's the only one that if she got her act together, got her head out of her ass, she would be up there to be equal. This sets up nicely, fellas and ladies out there, everybody who's a fan, this sets up nicely, nice for season four, which news came out that I think Netflix and Cobra Kai have agreed they're going to go, I think, five seasons. Well, I, I had read that they have planned the overall the, the the creators had plans or stories for up to six seasons. Now whether right. or not Netflix was going to, you know Well that we'll or, draw. But I don't see why not considering it's, you know, 
it's it's a it's been it's been kicking ass. It's like it's number one over the place. Massive hit. So it sets up nicely for season four, where you have the two forces, the combined forces over here, the the ultra bullies of Cobra Kai over there, and if you needed any more angst, Kreese picks up the phone. You don't have to know who he dials, but he dials that number. Been a long time. I think I need a favor. So I don't know now what kind of atomic bomb he's got in his back pocket, whatever ace in the hole he's got, but he knows. And you got to give credit to Crease. He comes off as a muscular older man, but uh, just a bully with zero resolve. But Mofo's got some brains. Now, look, if we all know, and we're all fans of, uh, of the legacy of the whole universe, he could be calling, two, you know, one of two people. He could be calling, you know, some random, you know, buddy of his, whatever. Or he could be calling, I do believe in it was Terry Silver. From Karate Kid Part Three, the you know you and four other people saw three. So. You know the guy with the long hair who he, he actually who he when when Cobra Kai was going out of business he gave freaking um he gave a uh, crease a job he brought back Cobra Cobra Kai and he got that kid Mike Barnes to beat up Larusso and he tricked Larusso into like you know becoming almost evil and the whole the whole thing. It wasn't the best movie, but it was still part of the thing. And, you Again, know. you were the fourth of people who saw it. Can tell it. Hey, you know, you'd be surprised. A lot more people saw it than you might think. Five. Now, what did you think of the return of Ali, of, uh, you know, Elizabeth Shue? Who looks pretty damn good still. I mean, uh, I, mean I, was, I, was, I was actually, you know. The boys just finished uh, filming, and then she got uh, uh, executed out of that one. So she's free. Spoiler alert. After season one, she's very, very free. But, I mean, barring, you know, a spot appearance here and there in a flashback scene. So I thought it was a perfect episode because I almost didn't want for them to start bringing everybody back from the dead. I, I liked the episode, how it was a one-time thing. It was perfect in the sense that you you and everybody thought, which I would be disappointed if they hooked up and then became a thing. And now he thought they would become a thing, but you know the best actually the best outcome was what it was. Exactly, that's why it worked out perfectly. Malcolm because mom. Yes. You know they have a thing, and it's been going on for a couple, for a couple seasons now, and it wouldn't be fair not to mention it makes no sense for the characters. They it, end- it- Ended badly, and yeah. Johnny R truly is to redeem himself as well, and he cares for Miguel. He cares so much. He put everything on hold. He did stop his drinking. He put his Cobra Kai on hold. Also, he can dedicate all his time to somehow motivate Miguel back to walking, at least take care of him, get his self esteem up. He tried everything that was wrong. Everything that you prescribed to do, he did wrong. Except the one thing he did is just sneak him in as one of those wish, make a wish foundation kids to a concert, and then he got his toe tapping, and that's the miracle. But if he truly wanted to dedicate himself to Miguel and be a better person, he's not going to screw up things with the mom. He's going to keep things cool and real with with Miguel, and you needed you needed her to actually kind of like let's leave it as today. I know I'm available. I'm separated. I know you are feeling this. We had a great time. We caught up. Sometimes let's leave it as this and feel good about it. And he feels good, except when he gets home, he finds out we got, got fucked up and, every kind of, and all hell's breaking loose. Yeah, and then there's a, there's a big fight at Cobra Kai between Kreese and Johnny. And then... And then we're, when uh, LaRusso goes to his house and sees what happened, and then it's the LaRusso increase, and then Robbie gets involved, then long story short, season four, 
Eagle Fang and Miyagi Do versus Cobra Kai in the All Valley Tournament. And you have a parting shot of in the Miyagi Do um, on one side, Eagle Fang scouts on the other side. I'm partial to Miyagi Fang. What about that? Miyagi Fang is pretty cool. I would do Miyagi Fang. I mean, if you had Mr. Miyagi's face and fangs coming out, I think that would rock. I would buy that shirt. You know what? That would rock. You know, what? we should we should get our uh, our artists, uh, you know, to whip something up. Yeah. All right, it, it is now prediction time, and we'll we'll now hand the mic over. We'll let Izzy go first. Let him make his predictions of what major things he thinks are going to happen. Uh, come season four, much anticipated because season it's been building up very well to this point. Well, though, first of all, me, I want to apologize that we jumped all, all over the place, but uh, a lot happened. And if you saw, <laughs> you, know, you uh, you know, yeah, you, <laughs> you'll be good. So, uh, you know, I had read a report among, among many that the creators wanted to bring essentially every character from the Karate Kid universe into the show. This is a mistake. You know, including Hilary Swank. And, you know, obviously we're talking about, which I mentioned, uh, the Terry Silver, the, the Thomas Ian Griffith character, and Mike and uh, uh, Mike Barnes, I think his name was, uh, the kid. So if they do that, we'll see. I mean... If they keep it to a one-off, like they had the Okinawa, they had an episode, and the uh, Elizabeth Shubert was an episode, that's cool. I'm okay with that. Now, I think they're going to reach into that, and especially the Karate Kid 3. That guy is most Kreese's good friend, and I think that's going to add another dimension. It's going to boost up. Cobra Kai. He's going to probably bring some badass fighters and, you know, to combine to fight against uh, Miyagi Fang, you know. And you'll probably see, my guess, you probably see uh, also Daniel's other ex, Robert Lively, from Karate Kid Part 3. She'll probably show up in like a little cameo or something. I'm assuming that. I mean, I, I don't know about the Hilly Swank thing. I, I don't know how that's going to work out, if it even does. She would be A list for that, or at least at least B plus list for. for the reason why this is a mistake. So I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna, I don't see that happening, but I do think that yeah. Silver's gonna be in it, and he's the guy that uh, Chris was talking to. And I think that it's going to amount to a final battle of obviously Robbie against Miguel, for the Old Valley and. If they wanted to continue, you would have to think that Robbie has to win. And then the next the next big thing would be Robbie trying to bring Robbie back from, you know, the depths. Season five, you're jumping into. Yeah, season five. <clears throat> well, I agree with you there. And I think it only makes sense that Robbie uses some dirty tactics and beats Miguel. Now, Miguel, if he takes another hit, he his children will be crippled. Yeah, but see, but they never mentioned that, you know, so we don't know that. I mean, logically, yes, but we, we, don't, we don't even know that because they never mentioned that. What would be crazy is if Robbie takes out Samantha in an underhanded way. I don't, but... The, the 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 women fight the women and then the guy from the oh, guy. That's right. I thought it was mixed. Oh well, yeah. Tori's gonna kick Samantha's ass. I mean, it goes without saying. Unless I, something. Happens. I think they. I think at that point, I think Samantha will will finally beat Tori. There's yeah. definitely gonna be some dirty handed play here. Um, the way it's gone so thus far, I don't think anybody's gonna die. Uh, somebody might lose an eye, but they'll get it back. <laughs> What I, what I don't, I don't, well, where I'm a little at a loss is what's going to happen with Hawk. Now that Hawk came back, his character progressed so much to be one of the badasses. If maybe he gets injured? No, 
I, I predict, if I had to predict, I think Crease has a thing in him for traitors. And he takes them out. And I think he's the one to either get jumped or get taken out. And not to mention, he probably eyes Hawk as the most threat he has to lose because he probably feels Tori's got Sam. Miguel's a cripple walking. Hawk is the only badass fighter they have left. Yeah. I'm sorry. All the other guys, they can be nice guys. They might wipe my ass on video games. They're not going to kick any one of those asses. No. No. It, it, it's, again, as the name says, it's Cobra Kai 1984 all over again. They're just a bunch of thugs ready to go. Now, <clears throat> how do you feel, Johnny and Daniel Sons? relationship that, that can't I can't foresee that being so chummy chummy throughout the whole thing it, it, it can't unless they play glam rock all the time you know I think they're gonna clash obviously they're gonna compete <clears throat> clash in, in teaching styles which is crazy I mean you're gonna have Miyagi Do doing the balance you know, the, 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 the dancing <laughs> Well, you have this guy freaking striking, and obviously they're gonna clash there. No mercy. Yeah, so we'll see how it's gonna really, you know. It should be fun, man. I mean, and we'll leave it at that, guys. I think if you haven't watched it, you're missing out big time. Jump on it now. It's not too late. Binge all you want. It's winter. It's cold. Nothing else to do. Catch on. Get on to Netflix. It's on now. Watch them all. Binge it all. Tell us what you think. It's crazy. It's actually exceeded all my expectations. It's actually, and it's actually a, a quick binge. It's the episodes vary from thirty minutes to like I think the the, the longest was like what forty three minutes. I think it was. So it you, can actually, you, you can actually binge it in a couple days, there. not one day. If you're a maniac like I like me, but you know you could probably binge it in a couple days easily. And, and again, it's been wonderful. Uh, like and subscribe, guys out there. Let us know what you think. Give us our, your feedback. You disagree with us. You hate us. You have a different perspective. Let us know. Drop a line. Uh, thank you, guys, Deader Dudes Nation. And, again, if you guys haven't known, uh, we celebrated last year. Uh, we're coming up on our one-year anniversary. We celebrated our more than, well, approaching 1,300 um, watch hours uh, uh, on podcasts. Um, downloads. Uh, thirteen hundred downloads. Downloads. Man, uh, lots of milestones are coming up. So, we are get ready that twenty twenty one will be a banner year, and we have lots of surprises, lots of content in store for you guys. So, this all happens because of you. Thank you, Deader Dudes Nation. Keep on liking, subscribing, spread the word. I'm Raka. Busy. Spread the word. Stay safe. Take care. And as always, save the whales. Save the whales.